गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वॉन्ट टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ माई सेल्फ अंकित आचार्य वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन अस्मु गोस्वामी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टूडे माई कंटेन इज जी टी क्वेश्चन पेपर सॉल्यूशन ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ वैक्टर कैलकुलेस एंड लीनियर अल्जेब्रा ऑफ जून टू थाउजेंड सो अप टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री डी वी ऑलरेडी सी सो लेट स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री ई फाइंड द रैंक एंड नलिटी ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स ए दैट इज इक्वल टू टू जीरो माइनस वन फोर जीरो माइनस टू जीरो 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 सो फर्स्ट रो इज टू जीरो माइनस वन सेकेंड रो इज फोर जीरो माइनस टू एंड द थर्ड रो इज जीरो 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 इन दिस क्वेश्चन आस्क इन टू मार्क्स सो वट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट दिस मैट्रिक्स इन टू अ रो इकोलन फॉर्म सो हियर इज द मैट्रिक्स ए ए इज इक्वल टू टू जीरो माइनस वन फोर जीरो माइनस टू जीरो 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 सो वट इज अवर द फर्स्ट प्रोसेस सो दिस इज अवर लीडिंग एंट्री टू इज अवर लीडिंग एंट्री ऑफ द फर्स्ट रो सो वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई फर्स्ट रो विथ माइनस टू एंड एड इन टू द सेकेंड रो सो दैट्स वाई दिस एलिमेंट दिस फोर बिकम जीरो नाउ सो हियर इज द प्रोसेस वी कैन राइट इन दिस मैनर आर वन टू माइनस टू दैट दैट मीन्स we multiply first row with minus 2 and add into the second row so the first row is as it is 2 0 minus 1 the second row become when we multiply first row with minus 2 and add into the second row the second row become 0 0 0 and the third row is as it is 0 0 0 so now you can say that this matrix is in row equal and form right in this row equivalent form matrix how many non zero rows we have only one non zero rows okay so that's why so the rank of a that is equal to number of non zero row that is equal to 1 okay because the definition of rank that is exactly the number of non zero row in the row equivalent form matrix of the given matrix so here is a rank of a is equal to number of non zero row that is equal to 1 Now by rank nullity theorem, also we have to find nullity, nullity of the given matrix. And to find nullity, now we already know the rank of the matrix. And to find nullity, we use rank nullity theorem. Now what it says, rank nullity theorem. Rank nullity theorem says that rank of any matrix plus nullity of any matrix that is equal to the number of columns of the given matrix A. so we already know that the rank of the matrix that is 1 plus nullity that is equal to number of columns of a that is equal to 3 so nullity of a is equal to 2 okay so the nullity of a is equal to 2 correct so here is a complete the question uh, solution of this question this question ask in two marks in that gt question paper uh, next is question 3 or so this is question 3 first uh, question 3 complete next is question 3 or let v is equal to xy in bracket xy where xy belongs to r where y greater than 0 so definitely this is a subset of r2 because it it has two coordinates x and y both are real numbers where the second coordinate is greater than 0 let ab and cd belongs to v and alpha belongs to r define ab plus cd that is equal to a plus c comma b into d and alpha into ab that is equal to alpha into a comma b raised to alpha so using this addition and scalar multiplication we have to prove that the given set is a vector space what is our addition just i again repeat uh, ab plus cd that is equal to a plus c and b plus b into d and alpha where alpha is any scalar alpha into ab that means scalar multiplication is defined in this manner alpha into ab that is equal to alpha into a and b raised to alpha so this question ask in 5 marks and we have to prove all the 10 conditions right for the vector space so the first five condition are for addition 
and the next five condition are for scalar multiplication so first condition is closureness i i want to explain the what is the definition of vector space first of all the first five condition are for addition and the next five condition are for scalar multiplication the first one is closureness that means if u v belongs to uh, set v capital v then we have to prove that u plus v that is also belongs to v then associativity u plus v in bracket plus w that is equal to u plus in bracket v plus w then commutativity u plus v is equal to v plus u that is true for all u v w right all u v belongs to the capital v where v is a set uh, fourth condition is identity that means there exists some identity exists which is also in the set such that u plus that identity theta sometime we call theta or sometime we call zero u plus zero that is equal to u and similarly zero plus u that is also u the zero is a addition uh, additive identity right of the given set uh, next one is inverse addition inverse inverse of addition that is u plus minus u we can find such uh, minus u belongs to v where v is a set such that u plus minus u that is equal to zero where zero is identity element so if this five condition are satisfied then we can say that the given set is a uh, satisfied all the first five condition for addition uh, next five condition are for scalar multiplication in which the first one is uh, that means the one sixth one is uh, alpha into if alpha is any scalar then alpha into u where u is any vector of set v then alpha into u belongs to also v right then u plus uh, then alpha in bracket alpha beta into u that is equal to alpha in bracket beta into u that is equal to beta in, in bracket alpha into u then distributive law that is uh, alpha into u plus v that is equal to alpha into u plus alpha into v then alpha plus beta into u that is equal to alpha into u plus beta into u and the last condition is 1 into u that is equal to 1 uh, u right so if this all the 10 condition are satisfied then we can say that that the given set is a vector space under the addition and scalar multiplication defined in the set right defined on the set so <coughs> exactly we have to prove here all the 10 conditions one by one we have to check all the 10 conditions one by one and if all the 10 condition are satisfied then we can say that the given set is a vector space under the addition and scalar multiplication which is defined in the statement so <coughs> let's see we check one by one all the 10 conditions here is the first condition u is equal to ab v is equal to cd and w is equal to ef belongs to v right so first of all we take three vectors randomly three vectors which are which all are belongs to v so <coughs> u plus v now just again try to understand the first of all set what type of set we have we have this type of set xy where xy is real number but the second coordinate must be greater than zero right so in this u v w uh, all are belongs to v so you can understand that b greater than 0 d greater than 0 and f greater than 0 okay now u plus v that is equal to a b plus c d now we define in this manner right addition in this manner a plus c b into d so that is equal to can be written as a plus c b into d okay now b and d both are greater than 0 so you can understand that b into d that is also greater than 0 and this is any real number a plus c so definitely it satisfied the condition of the set so that's why u plus v belongs to v okay uh, next is u plus v that is equal to a b plus c d that is it can be uh, that can be expressed as a plus c b into d using this definition that is equal to a plus c now a plus c can be written as c plus a because in real numbers we already have commutative property right and uh, b into d that is can also can be written as d into b so this is equal to v plus u when we uh, distribute them that we can write c plus uh, c d plus a b so that is v plus u 
so u plus v that is equal to v plus u now next one in bracket u plus v plus w that is equal to ab plus cd plus ef just see this four steps right you can easily understand a plus c uh, a plus ab plus cd plus ef in bracket ab plus cd now using this uh, our definition using on this bracket first of all so we can write a plus c bd plus ef now again use the definition of addition a plus c plus e bdf now a plus c plus e that can be written as a plus in bracket c plus e b in bracket df okay that can be written as ab plus in bracket c plus e df and that can be written as ab plus in bracket cd plus ef so easily we can prove that associative property is satisfied for this set v okay now what is our identity here we define identity or denote we identity element in this manner one okay we denote our identity element in this manner one now one is equal to 0 1 why we take this 0 1 just try to understand uh, definitely 0 1 belongs to v because the first coordinate is real number and the second coordinate is greater than 0 right so 0 1 belongs to v for every u is equal to a b belongs to v u plus 1 what is our u plus 1 that is equal to a b plus 0 1 that is equal to a plus 0 using the definition of addition a plus 0 b into 1 so that is equal to a b that is equal to u so u plus 1 that is equal to u similarly we can define or we can prove it that 1 plus u that is also u ok so thus u plus 1 that is equal to 1 plus u that is equal to u so this 1 what is our 1 0 1 is our additive identity okay that is our additive identity next condition for each u is equal to a b there exist minus u equal to minus a 1 upon b belongs to b such that u plus minus u that is equal to a b plus minus a 1 upon b right now <coughs> how we define addition just again i repeat how we define addition a plus a b plus c d that is equal to a plus c b d so when we add this two vector a b plus minus a 1 upon b that is equal to a minus a b into 1 upon b ok that is equal to 0 1 that is ex exactly our identity element 1 okay similarly we can prove minus u plus u that is equal to 1 okay similarly we can prove minus u plus u is equal to 1 now so the first five conditions for addition are easily satisfied uh, next condition for any alpha belongs to r and a b belongs to v alpha into a b that is equal to alpha into a b raised to alpha belongs to v okay so let alpha belongs to r then alpha into u plus v that is equal to alpha into a b plus c d that is equal to alpha a plus c b into d just you can easily understand uh, what it says right alpha into a plus c now here we use scalar multiplication that is alpha into a Okay, first of all try to understand this property where for any scalar alpha belongs to r and a b belongs to v alpha into a b that is equal to alpha into a right now <coughs> that is definitely real number but the second coordinate must be a positive real number right and it it also positive real numbers because of b is greater than 0 so b is positive alpha is any real number so definitely b raised to alpha is always positive because of b is positive right b is positive number and alpha is any number either it's positive or negative or either it's zero 
right in 0 that is also b raised to 0 that is 1 for b greater than 0 correct so in for any scalar alpha b raised to alpha must be a positive number so that's why this belongs to b it satisfied the condition that the first coordinate is real number and the second coordinate is greater than 0 okay now <coughs> that alpha belongs to R then alpha into u plus v that is equal to alpha into a b plus c d alpha into just we use the property of uh, we use the definition of addition for two vectors a plus c b into d now we use scalar multiplication that is alpha into a plus c and here b d raised to alpha now alpha into a plus c can be written as alpha into a plus alpha into c and b d raised to alpha that can be written as b raised to alpha d raised to alpha so that can be expanded that alpha into a b because of alpha a b raised to alpha that is alpha into a b and alpha c d raised to alpha that is can be written as alpha into c d right so alpha into u plus alpha into v so we can easily prove that alpha into u plus v that is equal to alpha into u plus alpha into v okay so the seventh condition for the vector space is also satisfied here is the next condition 8 let alpha beta belongs to r then alpha plus beta into u that is equal to alpha plus beta into a b that is equal to alpha plus beta into a into b raised to alpha plus beta ok so alpha plus alpha beta are scalar so alpha plus beta is also scalar so alpha plus beta into a b that can be written as we use the pro, uh, definition of the scalar multiplication so alpha plus beta into a into uh, comma b raised to alpha plus beta now alpha plus beta into a can be written as alpha into a plus beta into a and b raised to alpha plus beta that can be expressed as b raised to alpha into b raised to beta so when we expanded that terms we get alpha into a b raised to alpha plus beta into a b raised to alpha ok b raised to beta so that is equal to alpha into a b plus beta into a b that is equal to alpha into u plus beta into u ok so we can also prove that alpha plus beta into u that is equal to alpha into u plus beta into u so the distributive